which is closer to the border. Hello, welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm Jim Baum, director host. Thank you for joining us, and by us I mean former Senator Cal Potter and uh, um, the uh, 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 and me. And you. Nanette Bolafash. <laughs> and it is an honor to be with these two esteemed gentlemen I've known for, yeah. for a long time and have respected you so much. One of the things I wanted to do as I uh, lost the uh, spot where Nanette's name was at um, is to uh, talk about a variety of, of uh, things that uh, are facing us. But first I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the rising seas and the hurricanes that has left disaster and destruction in its past in the billions and billions of dollars while we do a little bit to raise the roads so we let people move to those areas uh, in large numbers. And rebuild. And rebuild. There's a fellow in the, the Houston area who has applied for a FEMA bailout and this will be his fourth time. He's collected already 500 some thousand dollars rebuilding each time. In the Some, same dangerous same place. Yep. What right. we need to do is have a few people who say um, there are some places you ought not to build. They're just too low. <laughs> and as a result, uh, not uh, encourage development. If you go to Miami, for example, the, the high-rise construction right on the waterfront right. is just unbelievable. And if a Category 4 or 5 hurricane directly hits them sometime, the damage amount is going to be mm -hmm. tremendous. Yeah. I know in the uh, Keys where uh, the buildings weren't well protected, although some of them were built fairly well, uh, just were de demolished uh, when they get hit by the full force of the uh, uh, hurricane. And of course, with the warming of the um, waters of the uh, Gulf of Mexico and those areas, the chances of uh, storms are, and bigger storms, tend to be more common. Sure. Warm water or warm air holds more water, and that's why you get the uh, tremendous rainfalls and storms of the intensity. The thing we need to talk about, I think, is the fact that uh, the world is warming. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that there are political people who are beholden to the, the fossil fuel industry who don't say they believe it. But uh, last year was the warmest year on record, and the year before that was the warmest year on record, and I'm sure that this year will be likewise. Um, I ran into a, a fellow the other day in a social environment uh, situation. A guy had gone to college, and he said he just didn't believe that the world was getting warmer. It's actually getting colder. I said, have you been listening to Rush Limbaugh or some other idiot uh, on the radio? I said, all the evidence is, is contrary, and 99% of the scientists will tell you that. So what's happening is the ice caps all over the place are, are melting and the waters are rising and so most of the nations that either are islands or are like Florida, um, very f little above sea level, parts of Boston, parts of New York, New York will be shortly underwater, particularly during the surges that come with storms. So it's actually in everybody's financial best interest to put aside whether you like the fossil fuel industry or not and just come to the conclusion that building in a low place is not a smart thing to do and realize that most of those people who have built in those areas, and Boston has been built in this areas that have been filled in as well as uh, New York, were done so within a relatively short period of time in man's history. And so you didn't have this so-called global warming um, in, the, in those days, and everybody thought everything would be the same for generations to come. Well, that's not the case. Well, even those who argue that, yeah, maybe the world is warming up, but it's not human cause, right? Well, it's all, it's a natural trend, it'll go back, mm -hmm. but you're pretty convinced it's human cause. Well, well I think it is, but uh, even if it isn't, it's warming up. And so if it warms up, there's still going to be a financial cost to, during storms and in flooding. And so whatever the cause, you can just say it's uh, God's will or whatever you want to hang your head on, go ahead and do it, but it's still warming up. All right. okay. Yeah, and of course, uh, one of the things that you don't want to do is just force or allow huge numbers of more retirees or those that want to go to a warm climate uh, to pile into those areas that can be affected uh, uh, heavily by a Well, by we just a saw hurricane. eight people died in a nursing home. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't enough air conditioning, I guess, to the heat. I mean, terrible. Well, and of course, uh, uh, prior to the air conditioning, you know, back in the 1950s, people didn't go to uh, 
Florida and some of those areas because they were just too hot during the summer and there wasn't the types of conditioning to keep them cool. Uh, there wasn't that rush to the to the uh, those climates because people didn't want to sweat all night long. Right. The sad part about it uh, in this whole initiative of, of building again is that the political power with the population moving south has also shifted exactly. to the south. Right. So places like Phoenix and Miami and wherever, wherever else where there's been tremendous growth, uh, they've gotten more clout. Yes, they Not have. only in their state legislators have become well, more powerful because of reapportionment and all that other things, but Congress as yeah. well. So you're going to see what's so interesting is there are people who opposed uh, bailouts for New Orleans during Katrina for very partisan reasons because New Orleans is, tends to be more democratic than any of the areas down south. Uh, they were opposed to that, but now they're screaming bloody murder that we need to help Texas and we need to help Florida. Right. A uh, little hypocritical in, yes. in, in that. But we don't want to end the show without talking about Foxconn. No, I'm going to come to that good, next. Good. But before we go there, um, I, I wanted to point out that uh, the uh, um, some of the communities down along the Gulf uh, on their own are raising the the, the heights of the roads, they're requiring mm -hmm. uh, more sturdy buildings and, and codes so that when they do get hit, uh, uh, they don't get shredded, uh, uh, that they have a chance to, to withstand some of these uh, um, uh, heavy winds. But it's being done more in a piecemeal um, county by uh, county effort or city by city effort rather than a national effort mm -hmm. to make sure that we're doing this with some rhyme or reason and we have the best engineering going on so that uh, uh, we're going to have an impact on, on on the rising seas. But anyway, we do have billions of dollars being spent elsewhere, including Wisconsin. It's called Foxcom. Yeah. Yeah, you want to talk about that, Annette? Well, I'm guessing that Cal is as is, is concerned as it, about it as I am. But it's only money. It's only three <laughs> billion dollars that could go to public schools to hire more teachers. We have a severe shortage, and it's going to get worse of good quality quality teachers. Um, all this money, the biggest giveaway to a foreign company mm -hmm. in, in history. U.S. history. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, How we, can you call that conservative? We, we can do that because we just will borrow and 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 build roads on on. Uh, on loans. Borrowing, borrowing the money. That's another great conservative yeah. idea. I well, you know, so. one of the, the interesting things is that this has been a, a growing trend to have states compete with each other in order to uh, woo companies. And the companies now know it, and they can hold back on their own uh, capital investment, hoping the states will come in with a, a relief package or some type of incentive package. And Wisconsin's topped everybody with this one. Um, yeah. My contention is that uh, this is over the board, over the top, and if that if that foreign company needed that much money, um, they maybe should have gone to some other state in, in, in the sense that uh, they're promising 13,000 jobs. That may not occur. Um, and one of the things that Wisconsin needs to do is get back to focusing on why it is that businesses like to be here in the first place, and it has been in the past, a good university system, good technical college system, and educated people. Um, and we've always been on uh, the top, generally, in performance based on that investment in education. And I, I would contend that uh, if we continue to do that, put more money in the university rather than cutting at 300 million as we did in the last budget and cutting primary and secondary education and cutting everything else that uh, relates to uh, human in, in education activities, uh, we would have a populace that people would want to hire versus uh, right. coming here for a short-term investment. But that's not the trend right now, but I think it's a boneheaded way of uh, approaching it because it's not a long-term solution. Well, and one of the reasons they want to be here is because they need large amounts of clean, clear water. Mm -hmm. And Lake Michigan happens to be one of the Great Lakes. So rather than them trying to ship uh, uh, or you know, go down to the southwest where they don't have enough water, uh, they're, they're coming here, plus they're getting a a three uh, billion dollar uh, bonus or whatever the amount is that they're getting. 
And does this bill require them to hire Wisconsin workers over, say, Chicago, mm -hmm. which is not far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. But uh, think so. Uh, I'm sure that uh, um, they're not all going to be Wisconsin uh, uh, residents being hired if they build a plant. Well, I think you have to remember that this is a foreign company also. Uh, and I'm sure that many of these foreign companies and their global operations will still find it more lucrative to hire somebody from Sri Lanka or India or Thailand for a buck an hour versus even $15 an hour or whatever they're going to be paying the people, uh, even a relatively low amount for our society in, uh, in the area of Racine, Kenosha. So I'm not so certain that we're going to see uh, all that growth because of the expectations of workers in this part of the world. Well, but it's the clean water that may have uh, interest them, and, and mm -hmm. it may have been the Great Lakes area that uh, this Foxcom would have uh, settled in on anyway because uh, they apparently use huge amounts of water in that operation on these flat screens. So um, maybe they should have been given us part of that uh, uh, three right. billion rather than us. <laughs> yeah, we were already attractive to them. Yeah. I, guess. Yeah. I get it. Uh, we happen to have uh, a budget that uh, um, will be worked on uh, by the time this program appears. The governor will have um, uh, done his uh, line vetoes and we'll have a $76 billion two year budget. A little bit late, but there it is. And some that of the problems you. that uh, are out there still are not solved. Um, we look at the transportation issue uh, near and dear to people in this area is, is the inadequate funding that will be coming for certain roads such as mm -hmm. Highway 23. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that any money that's going into uh, transportation funding right now seems to be in the area of borrowing, right. mm -hmm. which is a really short-sighted because of the fact that uh, you still have to pay it back with interest. So it eventually costs you more in the long run than it would be if you'd raise the gasoline tax, which is an opportune time to do it when a gas is about $2.40 a gallon. And I think they've done polls, and, and the majority of people are willing to pay a little bit more mm -hmm. in gas tax if it means better roads, because sure. we are all affected by how ter terrible those roads are. Yeah. And, well, Sheboygan County is a good example. For years, you couldn't, the county board could not get a sales tax passed, and once they tied it to roads, uh, there Benefits. seemed to be a change right. amongst the, even conservatives. conservatives that that's a worthy uh, need. Mm -hmm. Well, on the net boulevard, Cal Potter, and me, the program is running There's through the There's so end. much more to talk I about. I know we could talk about all the crazy right. things going on. And it's the uh, uh, citizens that are watching this program that need to be aware and need to pick up the phone, call their legislator and question whether they're doing things that they think they should be doing because that's your job. Yes, so next time, uh, this has been Legislative Update.